Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. This is the uh, November meeting of the Committee of the Whole Administration and Finance section of the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal uh, for the month of November, the date being November the 11th. Um, the first, uh, second item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. The chair is looking for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. I have Councillor Cameron moving and the seconder, Councillor Hunter. Any discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. The agenda is carried. And moving now to item three, which is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Are there any disclosures here this evening? Mm -hmm. Hearing none. None of school, so no. Moving to item five, business arising from previous committee of the whole minutes meeting. Meeting minutes. Does anybody have any business to bring forward? And I hear nothing coming. And so I'm about to move on. And the next uh, item is delegations and presentations and as you'll note we will have a closed session later on in the agenda and we will have a visitor at the closed session so now i'm on item number six of the agenda which is discussion items and the first item under item six six a is council budget priorities they did circulate a little note ask uh, folks if they would uh, give some serious thought to this and uh, just I'm uh, going to go around the table here in the next minute or two just to hear from each member of the committee as to what you see as kind of priorities and that will determine whether or not we're able to arrive at any kind of a quick consensus as to uh, to us to provide a little bit of direction to staff as they're beginning their work on the 2020 budget and I, I think that CAO or former CAO McKinstry, Clerk McKinstry, has already indicated to us that there's initial work being done. So, I'm going to start around the table. Who wants to go first? Any, anybody going first? I'll go first if you want. Okay. Go ahead. Um, first one is operational. Um, I have A, I'd like to reduce operations in the Recreation Department by reducing hydro in the two arenas by 10%, it saves approximately $20,000 a year. Uh, B, I'd like to reduce the operation costs in public works by our fleet repair. A 10% savings would be approximately $25,000. The two capital projects that I'm interested in is phase one of the Legion Way waterfront. And we'd like to see if we could get that in our capital budget this year. And resurfacing and repairing the Cedar Grove Road is very important to get done in 2020 in my opinion. Tax level, will we need to 1.7 to 2% increase due to no increase from last year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, I'm sorry, I missed the tax part of it. 1.7 to 2% increase. Councillor Cameron, you're next. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for, for the operational end of it. I'm just going to go on, on just slightly a slightly different uh, different tag here. But I, one of the things I'd like to see uh, from uh, recreation would be a breakdown of the canteen revenues and expenses per canteen. Uh, instead of lumping them all together, I'd like to see them broken down so we can get a clear picture just exactly what uh, what canteen 
students are, are doing uh, both in the expense and the, uh, and the uh, revenue uh, uh, situation. Um, and my, my next uh, point would be um, I, would like to, I would like to see reports from the senior managers on how uh, the departments uh, could, be, uh, could be made, uh, we'll say, a little leaner and a little more efficient. Um, what their what their feelings would be. This would give us a great, or at least it would give me a good uh, a good uh, idea of how the departments uh, are looking and uh, and how we can uh, how we can uh, help uh, help that way with with the budget for operationals. Or I'm sorry for capitals. Um, road upgrade grading uh, from gravel to uh, surface treatment and 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 two areas that I I, I think need to be addressed fairly fairly quickly um, is uh, Scott Road and Blair Road. Uh, we get a tremendous amount of traffic on those two roads uh, during the uh, during the uh, the uh, when the uh, when the landfill is or transfer sta transfer station is open and uh, many of the vehicles have uh, have trailers attached which uh, which is just another uh, another load for the for the roads to handle. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just at a blank as to whether we have a five-year plan for surface to or for gravel to surface treatment. I'm, I'm just not sure about that. If we if we do have one, that that's all well and good. If we don't, I'd certainly like to see one. And uh, another area that I'd like to uh, I'd like to see touched on is uh, there's been a number of uh, incidents, uh, vandalism at the Cardinal Library, especially on the east side of the building. Uh, just recently, we've had a window broken. Uh, in the past, we've had a fire set in the emergency door exit, uh, and it's just a hangout for uh, for younger people um, to to be around. And there's no security lighting there, and no security cameras there whatsoever. So I'd like to see something done there fairly quickly. Now, I will be speaking in a little more detail to that at the public works meeting. Uh, I will I will make that that statement now. Um, and uh, um, so anyway, I just I just like to see something done there because uh, the vandalism has been uh, has been somewhat uh, somewhat of a problem. It's been a problem. My taxation levels because we haven't had didn't have a tax increase last uh, last year. Um, my my guesstimate and it's strictly strictly a guesstimate uh, would be anywhere from uh, from two percent to uh, to three point five. My, uh, that would be my, uh, my. Mr. Mayor, you want that? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. And I'm going right around the table, then Deputy Mayor. All right, so I'm on the hot seat. Um, when I sat to do this uh, project, I was uh, trying to um, uh, figure out my wish list. Um, you know, as if I could go to Disneyland, but not knowing whether I could afford to go to Disneyland. Um, so, so for me, I, I found myself writing more questions than anything, you know, like what, what's the predict, predicted assessment increase for the 2020 year? Um, when will we know the results of the Giant Tiger Assessment Challenge? Um, are there any substantial increases or decreases in revenue, uh, such as OMPF or the recent uh, deal with Augusta when it came to the uh, $50,000 uh, possibility of uh, arena shared services? Um, do we have any idea of, of whether the school portion of the tax assessment is going to be uh, going down? The last couple of years, there's been decreases. Well, the, upper, uh, the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville have had 0% increases the last few years. Is it reasonable to think that they'll be doing a decrease or, or staying at zero again as well? Um, having said, and with all of those questions, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's hard to, you know, to, to sit down and draw out something without knowing you know, what you've got to work with uh, uh, beforehand. It's not usually the way I'd like to do things. Um, some things, though, recently that we've discussed that made a lot of sense to me. Um, uh, one, one of the things that hit home the biggest uh, for me was the uh, staff when we did the works uh, project and it showed uh, the benefits of the hardtop uh, surface crack sealing. Um, the long-term benefits uh, certainly outweighed any of the short-term uh, costs. and. Uh, if anything, I'd like to see uh, an increase in that. Uh, I believe that was part of operation, operations budget last year. 
Um, uh, staff did an excellent uh, job in that, uh, the preparation of that document, and it certainly helped me think for the next, uh, you know, 15 to 20 years. Um, I believe part of uh, operations budget is the um, St. Lawrence Corridor Economic Development Corridor uh, dollars. Uh, so I, I would see that as a potential savings if we were to remove uh, ourselves from, from that. Um, my uh, capital uh, project um, would be, um, and I think that you know it sounds like we're going forward with it. I, I think that uh, everybody being on the same page with um, not necessarily increasing and giving us uh, new things, but maintaining and, and working with what we already have. And I think that the, the boat launch and the docking situation in Cardinal is one that uh, we as a council uh, should commit to and work on a unanimous basis that you know that improvements to that area should be our goal over the next year or two. Um, and my other capital increase, which is a very broad, uh, broad based one, and it would be the continued um, the continued uh, work that's being done to uh, get the province to release some of the, the industrial lands and uh, whatever we would need to, if we needed dollars to, uh, to help work towards that ultimate goal of getting some of those industrial lands, that that, that would be uh, you know, one of the things that I would like to see done. Um, it, it's hard to increase our industrial base if we really don't have any land to sell. Um, from an increase, uh, you know, with all of those questions, it's really hard to tell whether we're up, down, somewhere in between. Um, but, you know, in my, my math, 2% increase works out to about uh, $112,000. Um, you know, doing, doing the math, that gives us a, a small amount and, you know, 4% Goes all the way to 220, roughly 224,000. So, um, I just think that we're going to end up in that two, two to four percent range. So, not that I want to be there, but that's. Thank you very much. Oh, hold on, one more thing, uh, and this is on my very big wish list. Um, capital or operations? Um, I, I think it's capital, um, uh, and that would be. Um, the success of Free Tree Day last year was, um, was was excellent, was really good. It was a very, very low cost uh, to the township. I'd, I'd really like to see that. Uh, I think we were sold out or sold out. We were given out in, in a very, very short manner of time. Uh, seeing that, you know, uh, trees, we need to plant so many trees for uh, climate diversity or climate change, um, I think working for a greater uh, number of trees on free tree day would be would be one excellent thing that we could do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm over to Councillor Hunter. I guess in uh, for operating, one of the things I'd like to see through all the departments is a increased regular scheduled maintenance schedule on all the equipment broke down in a regular timely fashion there that each piece has gone gone over and a record kept of it and, and when we see stuff being starting to wear that we have the parts and stuff ahead of time that we don't have stuff sitting down for two or three weeks waiting to order parts. Uh, the roadside mower would be one one of the main ones. Probably needs replacing but if we're keeping it we definitely need to have a regular maintenance on it and make sure that we have our have the bearings and knives and stuff in stock that it's not sitting down waiting for them to order in parts for two weeks. So, uh, one of the things on the sticking with the roads is that uh, I'd like to see uh, more money spent on increase uh, on the gravel shouldering of our paved roads. We get the shoulders get down and there's not enough gravel there for them to get them graded up, and then the roads sides of the roads start breaking off as the heavy trucks pull over on the shoulders and there's no gravel there, we start breaking the sides off our, off our, our roads. So I think we need to spend more time in making sure that they're graded and shouldered up pro properly. Moving to capital, number one priority, 
something that we took off the list last year to save money is uh, Ventnor Road reconstruction. This chunk of the Ventnor Road that's left to uh, do as our three largest agricultural farms located on it. The, the heavy transport trucks traveling steady on it, so it's in really bad shape and it really needs to be fixed this, this year. We've got a large tax, agricultural tax base on that road with a lot of heavy equipment traveling it. And I, it was paved a number of years ago and wasn't properly built up and, and we've had all, all kinds of problems with it over the years. It needs to be a, a full reconstruction job and that chunk of road, I think it's Our former operation manager likely knows, I think it's about two and a half kilometers or three kilometers in length there, but uh, it needs to be on. Uh, our second priority is I want, want to see uh, heaters put in the Spencerville Arena, same as we have in Cardinal, electric cage and gold heaters. They've proved very successful in Cardinal and cost us very little money to keep them clear and everybody's complained about paying as you go when we first come in, but everybody's happy with them now because they can turn the heat on whenever they want it on. They drop the tuning in and they got heat, so. Another big priority, we look at our maintenance schedule on our roads department, we need to replace another plow truck this year. Instead of being paying twenty-five dollars and $30,000 in repairs on these trucks, we let them go too far, so. And the last one is the, we put the anchors in for the docks in Cardinal. I'd like to see the new, new docks put into place there for launching. That's something that everybody in the township from the back to the front uses to launch boats. And I'd really like to see them put into place. So for tax level, I think we're looking, uh, looking at a minimum of 2% and probably up as high as 4%. Your $100,000 reduction on our grant that we already know, know about. We still haven't heard, as our Deputy Mayor has mentioned on their Giant Tiger appeal, how much money we're going to lose there and have to pay back. It uh, looks like to me that it's going to be a very tough budget year to try to control the spending <coughs> here because uh, we have operation stuff and, and capital that we have to spend on capital or else we're just going to, our operation budget's just going to run away with us. We don't start replacing this old equipment, so that's all I have. Thank you very much. Mr. Rod, oh, excuse me, Mr. Robertson. <laughs> just, well, just, just, straight past it. <laughs> just, just to go back to Stephen's suggestion on, on cutting down the electrical costs in the arenas, has anybody ever given any consideration putting solar panels on that? on the roofs of those buildings. And you're talking about two or three people now have mentioned 2% increase in uh, taxes. And when you look down the uh, the reduction this year in the OMF, uh, OMPF uh, granted by 110,000, which is two, two mills. So I think it's midterm in the election. It's probably a good time if you have to do it. It's a good time to probably uh, consider it. And, and the other thing is, all the unknowns that Tori mentioned, you know, it's pretty scary to start into a budget when you don't know what half a dozen things are, what, what's going to happen to a half a dozen of these items. That it? That's it. Out of a short list. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bradley. Uh, okay, with operations, uh, I just uh, have in a general thing, uh, which is reduce arena expenses. I don't know what categories that should be in, uh, how you do it, but it would be nice to say maybe have the department manager um, put together a little group of people to analyze a variety of things with respect to arenas, see if we can't bring some of those expenses down. Capital. <coughs> I think we should continue. I don't drive the roads of the township on a regular basis, but to me, we should be looking at. Uh, I live on North Channel, and it was paved. Um, it had been paved, I don't know, a century ago, and it was in bad shape. And this past year, it was um, paved. And it, it's a blessing. It's really a godsend. The road is in great shape. And. Uh, 
and now we have trouble keeping the traffic speed down <laughs> by how much speed bumps. Yeah. So, so I think we should look at how we can pave some of those roads around the township that are maybe short distances, but are in bad need of, uh, of the paving work. And uh, Ventnor, I think we got to bring it back onto the list because uh, we knocked it off last year and I think it's due. Uh, just to be fair to bring it back and we know it's in bad shape. Uh, the second thing on capital is I'd like to see us start re whatever evaluation we have to do for the Cardinal Fire Hall in terms of getting either an engineering study or another consultant study or whatever the steps are. I don't know where we stand in, in uh, the chain of events with respect to that project. <coughs> Um, I'd like to see some effort on that area. <coughs> Taxation levels? Well, I start with the assessment creep. I, I consider assessment creep to be a tax increase. So I would say whatever, I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, we could probably do all kinds of guessing and stuff, but um, just waste our time until we get the actual figures. Um, but assessment creep plus a tax increase to take us to 2%. Okay. That's it? That's it. Okay, I guess I get to go last. Okay. So, on the operational side, I guess my first thing on my wish list is uh, a few more dollars, I'm thinking approximately 25,000 more, into bylaw enforcement, uh, sp specifically the yards bylaw, and um, I really would like to see us look very seriously at a property standards bylaw. That's the first thing. Uh, and that's probably my biggest wish list. But also from an operational point of view, I would like to see us uh, request, uh, a council request to staff uh, that we be provided with regular, and that means monthly, reports of either acts of vandalism uh, on either our property or, or private property, and then uh, damage to uh, public property, either by our employees or by others and uh, I'd like those reports to come forward uh, with costs of <coughs> such vandalism or damage. So those are my two things from an operational point of view and I'm going to go then just to capital for a minute. I would like in this particular year because we had two major hot mix paving projects last year Weir Road and County and um, Weir Road and Piston Road, and I'm going to differ a little bit here with uh, Councillor Hunter, but I would like to see the major effort this year uh, put on surface treatment. In other words, more roads converted to surface treatment, and uh, the hope would be that we could do a major project of surface treatment this year. That's the hope. And I know that the uh, staff is really hard torn between uh, you know, hot mix and upgrading and rebuilding roads and at the same time trying to extend the surface treatment, so I'll throw them that little challenge. Uh, one of the things that I think would be extremely useful in that area is if we could get an update, uh, a five-year update as to our roads capital program. I know that we did a very extensive report about three years ago, I think, and I uh, would like to see it upgraded and uh, then the next year or two brought forward so that we can kind of get a look at it. Now to taxation. And so on the taxation front, uh, again, two uh, forms of raising uh, money, and the first is the assessment creep, which is the automatic um, increase in assessment that we get from um, uh, the, four, I guess I think this will be the fourth year. Uh, is it the fourth year? Yes, yeah, the fourth year. Uh, so we get that little bump 
I, I don't think it's going to be little. I think it's going to be significant. And we get that bump. And then as well, uh, I'd like to really get a, a little report on what our uh, new assessment or what our, what our roles will actually look like, along with estimates uh, from the staff as to what a current year taxation rates would bring in terms of additional dollars this year. So I'd like to see that before we go too far down the road. Um, now, we do know that we're going to lose the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund. We'll lose about $110,000 from that source. And somebody uh, in one of the previous go-rounds did mention the Giant Tiger refund. And I think that probably within the next month or so, uh, the Treasurer will be in a position to announce uh, what we can expect uh, from that um, little problem, although I know that uh, there's a, a lot of work being done by Dave Pablo, who's the county council. Um, he basically works for the county council, but he works on behalf of all the townships in uh, mitigating the effect of assessment appeals. And um, I understand from him that there's a fair amount of work being done right now to try to negotiate a way out of this, um, out of this, I'm going to call it a problem because of, as of this point in time, the actual appeal, the details of the appeal have not actually been filed. And what they're trying to do is to come to uh, a mutual agreement without well, that, I, I should put it this way. They're going to try to settle the issue before the appeal is made and then settle, and then file the appeal to, to, to be congruent with the settlement, if I can put it that way. That's a fairly common approach, and I know the mines used to approach it this way. Okay, so those are my lists, and um, I would like to see, uh, I know maybe uh, might appear a bit onerous for the staff, but I'm hoping that the staff has taken notes and can provide us with a kind of a summary of what they've heard at one of our next meetings. So that's the extent of that go-round. I think there'll be lots of opportunity for a discussion <coughs> at the uh, budget negotiations. <coughs> but as well, uh, once we get this kind of a, a summary uh, from the staff, maybe we'll have another look at it at one of the other committee meetings before we get too much further down the road. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, for your input. And I'm going to move then, unless there are questions, I'm going to move to, uh, without debate, I think I'm going to move to item 6B on the agenda. And if anybody would like to file their little sheet with the deputy clerk, uh, it would help uh, the staff sort of make the compilation. And I know I'll be filing mine. And Maybe I'll let you file them both of you with. All right, so I'm moving now to item 6B on the agenda, which is the Kojiko Network Expansion Letters of Support. And the reason that we've had this put on the agenda is because Kojiko, the representative from Kojiko, has been pushing us very hard to provide them with letters of support for their expansion plans. Now, when we met with the Kojiko <coughs> representative, he's a bit coy, as to exactly what the expansion plans would be for Edwardsburg Cardinal without uh, us signing a non-disclosure agreement. And since we were meeting with him in private in the back room, uh, we assured him of our ability to um, keep the corporate secrets, if I can put it that way, and that he was certainly, should certainly feel free to indicate to us the broad general nature of their expansion plans uh, without a without a non-disclosure agreement, but as I say, he he uh, he didn't go any further than that. Uh, but he still came back asking for letters of support. Now he's asked every mayor in the United County, and as a matter of fact, as near as I can figure out, almost all the townships in the Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus for letters of support. Now this has raised some pretty serious. And first of all, I want to thank uh, CAO McKinstry, she was CAO at the time, for cautioning me not to just send the letter of support without checking it out very thoroughly. 
which I did at the Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus meeting uh, that was held in Lindsay uh, by discussing it with Lisa Severson. Now, who is the, as you know, was all associated with EORN, the current project, which is to close the cell gap, the cell gap, the mobility, the mobility cell gaps in our, in our whole eastern Ontario region, $213 million project. EORN is extremely concerned that any letters provided to Kojo, Kojiko be very carefully written. And I think what we've done is we've circulated here in this agenda package what, what letters they would be comfortable with. But in your agenda package, uh, matter of fact, it's the second sheet, you will see a letter dated October the 9th. Now that letter was originally provided to us as a sort of a draft template. And it, and it was, in fact, authored uh, not by Kojiko, but by EORN before they came to a full realization of what the implications of the letter would be. <coughs> now, subsequently, and after our discussions, that letter of October the 9th has been withdrawn and replaced by a new version and I provided the uh, new version. I'm trying to remember the date. What date did uh, Jim Pine circulate the new version? If I could, to the clerk. Through the chair, uh, the letter from Mr. Pine was dated October 23rd. And that's the new version, mm -hmm. right. So we have a, a new version of the letter, which is acceptable, I'm going to put it that way, to EORN insofar as it protects us through the tendering process to get the EORN project up and running. Just a reminder that we need $60 million from the private sector. Bell, is someone at the door? It sounds like uh, this store. This store here. Yes. Yeah, uh, we need sixty million dollars from Bell, Telus, the big boys, yeah. towards the project. So, uh, from my point of view, the October twenty third uh, letter, letter, while it's an acceptable letter, we don't necessarily have to send it. And so, at this point, I've not uh, attached a signature or asked the staff to put it on letterhead paper. So if there's any questions, uh, I'll try to answer the questions now. I'm still not of, uh, of a full mind. Good evening. I'm still not of a full mind that, that the letter be sent, but I'd just like to hear some discussion around the table, considering the fact that the EORN project, if we can get decent tender results from the tendering, uh, is really the number one project to close the cell gap problems that we have here in Eastern Ontario. So any discussion before we move on? Otherwise I'm going to give it two more thoughts before I send the letter out. Well, I think we should uh, really look bear down on this. Like, <coughs> what is EORN's mandate? Well, they're the only ones that are, that are attempting to look at the, at the overall picture for Eastern Ontario. Now, what's the mandate? That's it. That's it. The overall picture, what's that mean? Cell phone, broadband, and internet. They don't do any broadband. Well, the first project, really, exactly. they were instrumental in laying the cable. Let me interject. First of all, they have no assets. Okay? They're basically a government intervener. Yes, that's what they are. They go to the government, look for money, pass the money to the private Sector. Okay, so they don't have any assets, they don't own any facilities, they provide no services. None. Okay, it, the, new net, the first network was Bell and ISPs. And 
if you if you look at uh, I don't even think they've signed their agreement yet. You know, the latest agreement for the 213 million. The other thing is that we need to be aware that the Ontario government, and you're aware of this, has awarded Bell Canada 765 million to build the new public safety radio network. The public radio safety network was part of EORN's sales pitch to get to, to the government to get money. Was that they were going to provide first responders, police, <coughs> ambulance, etc. Now, the government basically what's happened is Bell's done an end run, and there's going to be a ton of towers go up here. Okay, now Bell's going to own those towers. They're going to provide the services to the police and the ambulance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But they can rent space on that tower to anybody, as well as own it. They can use their own, their own equipment on there. So they're going to basically neuter the kind of thing that EORN has been doing. At least that's my take on it. The other thing is that uh, their concern, I think, comes from the, the, the business of they haven't issued their RFP yet. And they don't want to get into, have cr people working at cross purposes when their RFP goes out. Once it goes out, you can't talk to anybody. I mean, Kojiko could go talk to EORN today, if those, you know, before the RFP goes out, and kind of get their acts together. EORN will never provide fiber to the home. Never. Okay? Kojiko, that's what they want to do, is provide fiber to the home. So that we can get broadband services into our houses. Like, what good is broadband if it's only going to the uh, ambulance department or the police department? So, and Bell's never going to provide, or Rogers, never going to provide broadband services into places like Evers or Cardin. In fact, I don't even think they would look at, at the mobility stuff, okay? Now, as far as I know, Kojiko doesn't provide mobility services in our area. They do provide them in Quebec and maybe in other places in Ontario that I'm not aware of, but I don't believe they have any services uh, here in eastern Ontario of a mobile nature. So I would think that uh, they're maybe going to consider that when they say that in their, in their uh, request for support. Um, but I think their main objective is to expand um, uh, broadband services to communities to get fiber to the home. And uh, so I don't see that there's a lot of problem right now before they get the RFP process to have those two guys talk together, or even for us to support Coach um, uh, effort here. Okay. I follow your argument, I understand what you're saying. So you're saying that there isn't really any damage? I don't think there's any damage to your end. I think they're, they're spiking the ball <laughs> because they're worried about what might follow on after yeah. the project gets award and they've seen this 700 million that's going to Bell and that's going to upset them a little bit too. And, uh, and just so you know, I mean, I, and I, I, I reported this at County Council but I don't think I reported it here, is that we did have a very quick look at the Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus at what would, what would potentially be the third major EORN priority, if I can put it that way. Is right in some senses. Um, they don't own anything. They more act as a thorn in the side of the various parties to get some, something done. That's right. Um, but they're sort of their their dream for the third major initiative would be broadband, fast speed broadband everywhere, which we don't have at the present time. So. Okay, so does anybody else have any comments or questions? Yeah, Go ahead. Uh, and, and 
and, and, and it's, it's going to be a question which I, 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 I'm not sure I have the answer to. Perhaps Mr. Bradley could, uh, could help me out here by supporting, by sending a letter of support. Are we going to be in any, any way harm uh, our, our local uh, uh, businesses such as Joe Computer and, 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 and companies like that? I, I wouldn't think so. I mean, would, uh, Kojiko, <coughs> when I looked into this a little bit, uh, the money that Ko Kojiko has no deal with the government. They're trying to get a deal with the government. So they're going to look for whatever numbers of millions they need to uh, you know, expand this uh, project. And so they're trying to build a case which they can walk up to the government with and say, here's our plan, here's our case, here's our support, and so on. So they have no money yet, uh, no government money, no, no commitment from government to give them anything. And they're in that kind of initial phase of, of uh, preparation, if you like. And like I don't know how anybody wouldn't be prepared to say, okay, uh, Mr. Smith, if you've got a project, we need fiber to the home. I mean, how many of us can get, how many of us can get cable TV? People in Johnstown, people in Cardinal, but nobody else can get it. I don't know if they got what they got up here in Spencerville. How many people, and cable TV, by the way, is about the best service you can get because it's buried and uh, not subject to weather and like satellite is and so on. Uh, so, uh, we, we would like, I think the residents of members of Cardinal would like to see that kind of thing expanded. Yeah, sure. There's no question about that. And, and, then, and the businesses. And businesses. And then with fiber to the home, like I, I don't, I think I mentioned to you, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I don't think I have it with me, but the way that they're doing fiber, I mean, they're like a little cable like this. We'll have millions of capability for data. And uh, so uh, we all want that. Like, I, you know, I won't probably live to see it, but, you know, a lot of the younger people in the community certainly will. And this will be great for education, for uh, broadening the knowledge of everybody for placing orders and so of goods and services and so on so but in answer to the counselor's question once these major companies install the infrastructure company they're not in the business of being internet service providers no. so internet service providers rent facility from them exactly. they rent infrastructure from them That's and generally the CRTC sets the rate of, of that infrastructure rental and I would doubt that Kojiko will get into mobile services by as Kojiko. No. They would probably do what a lot of these others, Wind Mobile and all these yep. guys are doing is they're renting stuff. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions here? Yeah, just getting one. discussion. Yeah, just one quick one. Um, and I'll just read a little uh, section of their, uh, from their email that was, or their letter that was sent to the township. And it says, at the regional level, Kojiko has been working with the EORN and SWIFT on some of their initiatives. We remind you that having your constituents perform the speed test will provide us with more information to lobby the gov government for funding on for funding for your municipality. Um, so my question out of that would be, it, do we have access to a speed test? I, I have yet to see one, and in our letter back, it doesn't respond to, to that uh, comment directly. So well, I mean, <coughs> any of us can do speed tests from our own yeah. home computers. So, but they're asking for, for us to provide them with, with that information so that they can lobby the government so. Well, did, what was your impression? Did, did you get the impression from his um, discussion that he wanted us to actually do a survey of our residents? I think that's what he was hoping for, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and I think we, we're not in that business either. I mean, that's his business to look after. If he, if he wants to approach our residents directly, go at it. So there isn't, there isn't, if I can, uh, there isn't, they didn't provide us with a web address that we can go to to perform a speed test on their website or anything like, like that. No. Okay. I've done lots on my bell, but I've never done one for them, so. Mr. Mayor, the customers on Kojiko now, like in Johnstown and Cardinal, 
can do speed tests on. You have to go to court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if my internet provider is B2B2C and I get the facility via the Bell DND, uh, I can't do a Kojiko speed test. Yeah. So, like okay. in my case, I have explored it. Yeah. So if I do a speed test, and there's several different websites that will do speed tests for you, probably eight or ten. I'm getting a test through to a node, mm -hmm. okay, which is somewhere in the network. And that's not Explornet's node. That's a node probably owned by Rogers or Bell or somebody. Okay, and so I'm getting what my up uh, load speed is and my download speed. So all that does is tell me what the network is like. Now, if I want to go and buy more broadband, more capacity from Explornet, I may get a little bit better um, speed, but um, you know that's that's a, a personal kind of a thing. Yeah. You do. Yeah. So I don't know how they. Would. Yeah, the, and and I've had that discussion with them. To you know, when there's several of us in our in the house trying to stream TV yeah. and stream uh, different things, and the availability of of that increase isn't there. Well, you so, can't get. Uh, 50 megabytes. Or no, God, no. The fastest uh, to to a house where I live is 10, and yeah. it's only performing at four. Yeah. So they can't even actually provide at the level which they say they're providing at. Well, yeah, but that, when they say 10, they don't mean it's eight continuum. To the, it's, supposed supposed eight continuum to the, it's supposed to be eight. It's supposed to be to the house. Yeah. Well, not even on a continuous basis. It's well, up and down. Well, except though that uh, I, my situation is similar to to the deputy mayor's. They they will only sell me. Only what they can provide on a continuous basis. They say, we could give you spikes to here, but we can't guarantee them, and they're not continuous, and we won't sell them there. We'll sell you at this level because we feel we have a good offer, a, a good chance of providing you at that level continuously. Okay, I'm going to wind up the discussion on this before we get too technical and I forget what I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, we'll go on then to uh, item number seven on the agenda which is the action information items, and the first one comes at 7A, the Municipal Modernization Fund update. We had asked the staff to provide us with a little summary of where we are. That summary is provided to us here for information purposes. Are there any, is there any discussion on this? You can see where we stand. We've used all the money so far, I think in a very, uh, first of all, collegial way and a uh, very wise way. Any discussion? None. None? All right, about to move on then with 7B, which is the planning team bylaw update. Again, you have the briefing note, and you can see the rationale uh, that the staff has provided for increasing uh, these this tariff of fees for planning matters. And uh, you see the previous rates, as well as the new proposed rates. And I'm looking for a discussion here, if there is any. And if none, the chair is looking for a mover and a seconder to bring the recommendation to council. Hearing none, I'm looking for the mover. Councillor Cameron, and we'll have a seconder, please. Mr. Bradley. <clears throat> Those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried. Go to council on the 25th. And I'm moving to item number 7C, Community Grants and Donations, the Policy Update. Again, you have a briefing note, and uh, I think you can see the rationale here as well. And uh, I'd like to thank the, uh, I think it was the Deputy Clerk put this together, and uh, very well put together. And I think the key thing to notice here is that if an organization or an entity uh, receives a community grant from us uh, when we do our budgets in about March or April, then they're expected to provide us with a revenue and expenditure statement, a financial report, if I can put it that way, by December the 31st, or else they become ineligible to apply the next year. Very reasonable thing. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'm looking for a mover and a seconder to bring the recommendation forward. Deputy Mayor Deschamps, and is there a seconder? I see Councillor Hunter. Councillor Hunter. Calling the question, those in favor? 
Motion is carried. Now, I'm at item number D, which is the Council Code of Conduct Policy Update. And again, a major staff effort to update this policy. Discussion of any. I have one item I'll bring forward. I'll speak last. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, the way the, the, the policy is written, um, would uh, Mr. Robertson and I be considered uh, members of uh, council for the purposes of this uh, policy? Good question. How would you interpret it? That was my intention. Hey? Through the chair, that was my intention. Yes. Okay. Okay, so no one's raising this issue, so I'm going to raise it. Uh, and, I'm, and for the reason that I'm raising it, I'm going to ask that there be a change. Uh, so I'm on page two of six, and it's under clause 5.2. And I'm going to read the entire uh, clause and then highlight the sentence, which gives me a problem. Members of council shall not release, disclose, or use information in contravention of the provisions of the Municipal Freedom of Information and Pri uh, Protection of Privacy Act or any other applicable privacy laws. Up to there, I'm fine. <coughs> the next sentence gives me a problem. Members of council have the same level of access rights to information as any other member of the public and shall follow the same processes as any private citizen. I have a real problem with that because I think as elected officials, we have a right to a slightly different level of access than the general public walking through the door. And I wouldn't want to see this bylaw go forward until that issue was resolved. And it is an issue for me. Uh, and I know that there is some, there are two schools of thought on it, but we don't run for election and sit here night after night after night, as the time may be, and, and, and become having equal rights with the chap on the street. I think we have a right to know what's going on at all times in the municipal office, in the background, behind the scenes. So, comments if any? Hearing none. Well, do you have a, a rewording, a proposal for rewording it? Drop right. the sentence completely. To, I, I'm suggesting drop the sentence. Uh, do I, is there a consensus around that solution here? I don't, I'm hearing three of us, but I don't hear, hear four. I see four heads nodding. I don't see a problem with dropping. Five, six, six heads nodding. We're good. You're good? So there's seven heads nodding that that sentence be dropped. Thank you very much. 6.2. If members do communicate with the public and media, the members will accurately and adequately communicate the attitudes and decisions of the council, even if a member disagrees with the majority decision, so that there is respect for and integrity in the decision-making process. I think that's very carefully worded. It does not it does not take away from members of council the right to disagree. It just requires that the that the decision be supported and properly communicated. Have I interpreted that clause correctly? I may, through the chair, Mr. Mayor, you have indeed interpreted it correctly, and I might point out that it's been the same clause in the Code of Conduct for some time now. Yes. It's not new. <laughs> not new Glad one. I've been interpreting it correctly for some time now. <laughs> not a new one. Okay. All right. If there are no other uh, concerns with this uh, draft, the chair is looking for 
a mover and a seconder to bring the recommendation forward to council. And I'll have may Councillor may Hunter. I, may I just ask a question? Uh, okay, but let me first of all get a seconder. So, okay, so I've got Councillor Robertson seconding. And Oh, I just raised you. You're now an elected you official. Just got elected. Now you're really under the code. <laughs> my, my apologies. Uh, recognizing Councillor Cameron. Um, I, I, I just, I have a bit of a problem with 13.3, uh, the last sentence, where it says members have no individual capacity to direct staff members staff members of staff to carry out particular functions. Um, I, I, I believe I understand the intent of, of that sentence. And the, anywhere in the intent, does it prohibit a member of council from asking senior staff such as the CAO uh, or director of operations and the CAO um, <coughs> if certain if certain um, if certain things could be carried or not carried forward but um, discussed with with the particular department I, I'm, I'm just a I'm just a little worried that no individual capacity seems kind of strong to me. Um, well, it's no individual capacity to direct. That's yeah. correct. That's yes. That, that that seems somewhat strong. But in other words, if I and this is totally hypothetical, uh, if I went to, we'll say the CIO and asked if a certain department could do something maybe a, dip, a different way. Could I be just ignored? I, I guess that's um, I, I guess that's my, my feeling on, on that uh, last. Looking to the clerk. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I guess my response to that, Councillor, would be that um, council as a whole directs uh, staff, and so if you have a concern or a different way of doing things, then the place to discuss it is at the council table and ensure that everyone is uh, on board. Uh, with your with your suggestion or your idea, it's not that we would, um, as staff, ignore anything that you said. Just simply that that it, it's important that uh, we understand that our work is directed by a group of people, and that uh, that group of people has consensus into what direction that work should take. I must say, you have such a way with words. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. That's all. Okay, uh, no further, if there are no further questions, I have a mover and a seconder to bring the recommendation forward. Vote to call the question on the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. <coughs> All right, now I'm at uh, item 8 on the agenda, which is council inquiries or notices of motion. Does anyone have anything to bring forward? Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As, as stated previously uh, at the uh, Public Works uh, meeting uh, uh, next Monday night, I will be uh, uh, bringing forward a, re a, fr a further request for the library security lighting and cameras to be uh, to be uh, uh, installed in, uh, at, the, at the Cardinal uh, uh, Library, and I will have uh, I, I will have more uh, uh, ammunition. So, so to speak, about the vandalism that's, uh, that's gone on there. Thank you. Anyone else bringing anything forward as an inquiry or notice of motion? Hearing nothing. Hearing none. Uh, Councillor Hunter. I just have one that I think uh, just an uh, information item that I'd like to see forwarded to council members on, uh, on our recent sale of our trucks. I'd like that information forwarded to council and what we actually received for these trucks. At the PW meeting? No, I just letter sent out so all the councillors know what we actually received from them. Okay, it is uh, pretty much we're asking basically for a communication. Yeah. We have a consensus that that communi be communicated to us. I see a nodding of heads here? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have a consensus on that. 
And anything else coming forward? Hearing none. Vote to go on to item number nine on the agenda, which is the mayor's report. And under the mayor's report, uh, the first thing is uh, the, the little item 9A that was circulated in the package. I just wanted to bring this forward because there isn't much information comes forward from County Council as it pertains to our responsibility under the social housing uh, agreement that we have with the province. And so I thought uh, this sheet was quite well prepared by the department and I thought I'd just highlight a few things. So I'm at the the top left box uh, leads Grenville rent geared to income targets. When the responsibility for social housing was transferred to the county uh, back about uh, 20 some years ago, pretty close to 20 some years ago, we were mandated to provide 667 uh, rent geared to income units that we owned 70 that were that we would uh, provide by means of rental supplement and then 250 that we entered into agreement with various nonprofit uh, uh, nonprofits located throughout the counties now in actuality we own 645 of the units uh, we do a rent supplement for another 140 uh, families and we purchase 210 from various nonprofit housing providers. These are the nonprofit housing corporations that exist all throughout the county. And I think Edwardsburg Cardinal is the only township that does not have a nonprofit housing corporation within the township that rents out uh, properties, apartments, in other words. You can see that our projected revenue for 2019 from these rental units is two million eight, and you can see the the household limits for rent geared to income. They're just by piece of information. And then going to the center at the top, the Leeds Grenville property. We have 173 family units, mostly in Brockville and Prescott, that are owned by the county, and we have 16 buildings consisting of 498 multi-residential buildings. And these are owned, maintained by the county. Helen Street in Cardinal is one. The Maples building here in Spencerville is another. Item number nine, which is at the top right, there are nine non-profit housing providers that we do business with. These are the non-profit corporations. From them, we purchase or use 217 market rent units, and there's a difference between market rent and rent geared to income. And we also purchase 250 rent geared to incomes. In subsidy, for either market rent units or rent geared to income units, we provide subsidies totaling 1.143 million. And this is paid by the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville to those nonprofit providers. And then just going to the bottom right corner, you can see the kind of social housing waitlist information. New applicants, applicants housed during the year up until June the 30th, and then eligible applicants as of June the 30th. So in seniors, we have 71 new applicants. We managed to house 40 of them over the period to June the 30th, and we have 104 eligible as of June the 30th. Families with children, we have new applicants 120, applicants actually housed 15, and eligible applicants looking for housing 77. And I, I just want you to look at that 77 number for a minute because Central Mortgage and Housing Corporation has a new program under a federal government that provides funding to developers that will build this kind of housing. Now, unfortunate thing about it is, once you enter under an agreement with Central Mortgage and Housing, you're obligated to provide that unit for rent for 20 years. So not too many developers pick up on it. And then lastly, singles or couples with no children. We had 118 new applicants. We managed to house 11 of them. 
and we have 211 of those types of applicants waiting uh, for housing. So just a quick picture, and I won't spend a lot of time on it. There is a backside to the sheet. Members have questions or are interested, more than happy to answer questions along the way. That's the first part of my uh, report. I've already talked about the Kojiko letters. Just a quick uh, update here on a couple on one thing. Uh, AMO has indicated to us that they have distributed over $12 million in surplus federal gas administration fees to municipalities last week. Your municipality, that's us, received $4,128.13. And then they point out to us that an additional $107,587, which is the second half of our municipality's 2019 allocation, will be transferred later this week. Now let me say, first of all, that Ontario is the only province where the federal gas tax money transfers directly from the federal treasury to AMO, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. There's a contract in place between the feds and AMO, and AMO is responsible for the distribution of that money. Because they are so good at it, and because they have been doing it for so long in such an efficient manner, their administration fees, they're allowed an, emission, they're allowed an administration allowance within the envelope, <laughs> but because they're so efficient at it, they're able to, to save $12 million in administration fees, and then they distribute that back to the municipalities as well. So <clears throat> all good news from AMO and from the federal gas tax. And just a reminder that the 107587 which is the second half of our 2019 allocation, was a one-time doubling of the normal allocation, if I've got it correct. Treasurer might want to say more words about that. Have you already got the money? Uh, we have the money, yes. We've received those monies. It's de gets deposited straight into the reserve fund. Um, and so we've gotten all the funds from the federal gas tax for the year in 2019. Good. Now, I guess the one thing that worries me about the federal gas tax, <coughs> forgetting to bring this up, so I hope staff will make note of it. When we do a project which is financed in part by federal gas tax dollars, the AMO agreement with the federal government is that we will provide signage for the project. And I know that in some cases that sort of requirement gets kind of forgotten. But from time to time, AMO does do audits. And they ask if we're for, if we're meeting that requirement of the of the agreement. So I'll just bring that up to staff because, and I don't remember the details of the Weir Road funding or the Piston Road funding, but if there was federal tax federal gas tax money involved in either of those two projects, there really should be signage associated with those projects. Is that Mr. Mayor? Is that like uh, little Jack Horner? Uh type of thing? Uh, is this road project being funded by... Yes. They have a, um, they have a format that, you, that they asked you to use, I think. Okay, moving on. Uh, one, <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Mayor. Uh, what was our total f with the federal gas last year? Counting this 107. Uh, we had two payments. So right. we are, our normal payment is two, uh, 215000 And then we were capped up with a double amount of that. Every year, or no, or, just in 2019, we no, have no, no. But every year, we get this 215, or does we, it fluctuate? Change? It does fluctuate. We get the same amount for 2020, but it will go up. Um, I've, we've got a projected for 21 and 22 and 23. It will go up a little bit in each of those years. I think it goes to 224 in 21, um, and 230 something in 2022, 23. Thank you. So they do give us an indication of what's coming. They do. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the, AMO has been lobbying hard to have that increased as a steady source of funding. Last year was the first time that we saw a doubling of it. And so we can cross our fingers that that happens again this year, but you cross your fingers, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last thing on my agenda. 
Uh, well, actually, that pretty much shoots it. Um, unless anybody else has anything that, any questions they want to raise with me about any of the ongoing issues of the day. Hearing none. Okay, I'm about to move on with the agenda, and where am I? Uh, I'm at item number 10 on the agenda, which is the question period. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? Yes, Mr. Martel. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My apologies that this was discussed. I got here a little late tonight, but uh, I realize it's not on this agenda, but my understanding is the town of Prescott is looking for a response regarding UC's involvement in the request for the new arena. Can you give me any updates on the status of that from this table? It, it, it wasn't on the agenda tonight because we had no agreement to work with. We're, we've been uh, we've been sort of uh, cat and mouse on that one for quite some period of time. So your answer to Prescott is no answer? There's a deadline of 11.59 tonight, I think, if I recall correctly. We don't have any meeting, any council meetings scheduled to be able to deal with anything. And we have nothing on the agenda to deal with. So your answer to Prescott will be no answer. I beg your pardon? Your response will be no answer. Well, uh, response to what? We haven't had, uh, we haven't had much communication with Prescott. Okay, great, thanks. All right, number 11. Uh, we do have a closed session here tonight, and we do have our guests with us. I'll introduce the guests in, uh, in uh, greater detail when we get into the closed session. But in the meantime, the chair is looking for a motion uh, to go into the closed session at, uh, I'll call it 7.42. So, Someone have the motion. I don't have a name. Move by myself, second by Deputy Mayor Nisha. Committee of the whole proceed in the closed session of 7:42 p.m. in order to address a matter pertaining to proposed or pending acquisition or disposal of land by the municipality or local board, specifically industrial land, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, specifically citizen of the year. Third, trade, secret, or scientific, technical, commercial, financial, or labor relations information supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board, which if disclosed could reasonably be expected to prejudice significantly the competitive position or, or interfere significantly with the contractual or other negotiations of a person, group, or persons, or organization, specifically minutes of closed sessions dated August 12, 2019. Okay, the motion is on the floor. Those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Many of the hold is now resume at 8.55 p.m. Those in favor of arising from the committee of the whole? Aye. Uh, excuse me. Okay, so that's carried. So now reporting out of the uh, closed session, uh, I'm looking for the motion to approve the minutes of the closed meeting held on August the 12th. That's me. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Committee of the Whole approves the minutes of closed session dated August 12, 2019. Those in favor of the motion? <coughs> motion is carried. And then further reporting from the minute, from the meeting, the committee reviewed the submissions and selected an individual for the 2019 Citizen of the Year Award and uh, provided directions staff as to how to go about executing on that and then third issue the committee met with a delegation concerning the purchase of property and uh, proceeded cautiously <laughs> to uh, take small steps forward and that's the report out from the whole committee of the whole and the chair is looking for, I think we have a, uh, I think we have a, uh, no, we don't have a confirmatory <coughs> bylaw. We, all we need now is the motion to adjourn. Moved by myself. Second by Councillor Cameron. The committee of the whole does now adjourn at 8.57.
p.m. Thank you very much. Calling the question on the motion to adjourn. Those in favor. Motion is carried.